103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, March 7th, 2021. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5, and as usual, we have our, co- our co-host on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Hello. That's all and our guest today, <laughs> Dread Pirate Higgs uh, and Boudreaux. Hello, all. Hello. Uh, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling you're the only non-believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. There are several atheist, free-thinking, and rationalist groups that exist right here in Knoxville, and we'll be telling you how you can connect with them right after the mid-show break. Also, did you know that there's a streaming call-in atheist TV sh- slash video show broadcasting here in Knoxville and has been for over 10 years? Yes. Did you know that one, bet? Yeah, and there's a big prize pool at all the events, but it's basically just army shooting game simulations. But if you like that, uh, go for it. No. A lot of people like it, though. <laughs> I think they make them every year, and they're like the most yeah. biggest selling video games ever. But no. Not no, for me, but you're still on the I'm wrong glad channel. people like them. I'm glad people like them. <laughs> Go for it. Nope, uh, but we'll tell you how you can find the show after the mid-show break, get a, give you a little more information about it. If you'd like to interact with us during the show, go to Facebook and search for our Digital Free Thought Radio Hour page and use the messaging function to send us questions or comments. Well, Matt, what do we have going today for his topic? I'd like to talk about deism for a little bit. In fact, I think you were the one that recommended the topic. And when I first Mm -hmm. saw it, it looked like deism. Like you want to talk about (laughs) the science of death? Did I misspell it? (laughs) No, I didn't know. I didn't know. The science of dying? Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. Deism. Yeah, 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 deism, the study of dying. I was just like, well, it seems a pretty easy, it seems like a pretty easy topic. (laughs) I think think everyone's going to try it at least once. And everybody's Uh, got an opinion on it. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, it's going to actually be a more lighthearted light-hearted discussion on the topic of deism before we get into it throwing it to our own dread pirate higgs for our weekly invocation our noodly lord who art in a colander al dante be thy noodles thy blood be rum thy sauce be yum with meat as it is with vegetables give us this day our garlic bread and forgive us our cussing as we put up with those who cuss against us. Yes. And lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs. For thine are the noodles, and the sauces, and the grog, whenever and ever. Ramen. Ramen. I have to get some carbs in, my bad. <laughs> I want to do a quick overview of how everyone's been over the last week. Dread Pirate, how you been since um, the last couple of weeks, actually? Okay, well, uh, we had the judicial review. Um, I think uh, the last time we talked, it had happened, and the judge had not yet uh, come down with this written decision. So he decided uh, not to, well, he decided to uh, dismiss the petition. Um, And this whole thing seems to hinge around this idea of skepticism, right, not skepticism, sorry, uh, satire, as uh, a, um, a means to uh, dismiss uh, people with claims like mine. Um, so essentially he was saying, because uh, I see you as uh, engaged in satire, uh, anything you have to say is, we don't have to pay attention to it. It's, it's not a violation of any kind of rights to uh, a religious expression or freedom. So. I have a I have a, an appointment with a, a lawyer this afternoon. I know it's Sunday, but he's a good friend of mine, um, and we're going to discuss next steps. And possibly, potentially, the way it's going to go is uh, we're working on our objects for becoming a uh, religious charitable organization nationally. And so, if we get it, we're good. If we don't, then we take it to the Supreme Court of Canada. Yeah. So it seems like, uh, good luck. yeah, it seems like the judge made a hard line rule of I can yep. decide what's a religion and what's not a religion. 
Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's not what the government's role should be. No, and it's that not. Should be inherently just like the basic focus of like, it's not your job to say what is religion and what isn't. And, and at the bottom line, I'm just asking to wear my hat on a night. Yeah, card. exactly. Right? Religious card. <laughs> like, why are you making this a big deal? Like, exactly. I'm clearly going through efforts to face yeah. this discrimination that you're putting on me. Yeah. So I've, I've had a few uh, a few interviews um, on the radio and and uh, for articles in uh, papers. I'll be in the Toronto Star, for instance. Um, this it should be up there today, actually. Blow it up. So getting some getting some uh, profile out there and and maybe finding a lawyer that's uh, actually willing to take something on pro bono uh, yeah. to defend constitutional rights, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is a constitutional issue. I also yeah. think like. In, in the much smaller, in the more wider picture, your organization has done weddings, community service, you guys have helped people in a number of capacities, like yep. particularly if they're, you know, secular in a, I don't know how to, I don't know what other options are available for me. Even your chats for coffee was like, hey, I'll sit down with you and we'll can just talk, have some coffee. I can pick your mind on stuff. I'm not here to mm -hmm. sell you any ideas, but just like a nice right. place where we can think critically, even if you are religious or not, here's a good place to just have community with one another and, and talk over a table. That's a fantastic service that you don't get from even like religious groups because right. there's always the sell. It was like, hey, and now why don't you come to my potluck and you can come on Sunday church and I can take care of your kids. It's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> exactly. Back down, Wendy. It's all good. <laughs> but yeah, I, uh, I think for the most part, it's a silly thing, but I'm glad it's documented silliness because this is, these are the steps that need to be done. I think you're right. seeing a lot of the th stuff that like civil rights people had faced early sixties where it's just like, really, are you in writing being this evil? It's like, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, that's, this is normal. It's like, ooh, this is gonna look bad in history, yeah. but I'm glad someone went through the trouble of documented it. Like, yeah. I'm glad someone was there with the photograph, seeing people getting hosed down. People getting recorded, like, you can't sit on the front of the bus. People yeah. taking pictures of those signs, like the printing out sign people had to like, are you sure we should make a sign that says colors only? Like, is this okay for everybody? It's like, yeah, it's probably, yeah. You know I mean, that's not good for anybody. Yeah. So you're making through, you're making the effort for history. I appreciate it. I've uh, I've also been in contact with the BC Humanist Association. So um, um, they thank me for my activism and uh, are engaging me to participate in some of their activities. So uh, I think that's really good. Bujo, you got any ideas on this? He's been going through this court battle for a while. Yeah. No. I, uh, I man, I applaud you for for going through it, and it's got to be tough. And I. I yeah, I really, really question this this judge and his yeah ability to just decide that he can choose. Because um, mm. I always thought that was the one thing almost kind of poetic about what the Church Flying Spaghetti Monster does is it's it's almost in uh, that argument is infallible unless you um, agree that any uh, religion can be judged that way. And I think a really good example of that was the uh, uh, Satanic Temple. Yeah, uh, right. did something similar where they yep. we're using they, your book, huh? We're you the Satanists are like we're using your book, like what yeah, do you well, mean? Like we're crazy. <laughs> like we're using the book that you guys use. Yeah, yeah, in this yeah. example, though, these characters uh, exist in your religion too. They went after the Westboro Baptist Church, which all of you I'm sure are familiar with yeah. this group, and they went to like the the founder of it. I think it was the, either the grandmother or the grandfather of, of the leaders. And they, they went to her grave and they performed what's called a pink mass. And what they basically did is turned their soul gay. And so like they had this whole uh, uh, <laughs> legal issue with, with it. And basically the, the old, they pushed them in a corner where the only way they could, they could um, uh, 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 sue them or, or, or take issue with what they did is if they admit, admit it worked. So, <laughs> it was, Oh, that's so good. Beautiful. That's great. So I don't know. That's, if there's some... that's wonderful. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't sue for damages if there's no damages, right? Right. Exactly. Oh, uh, it's good. I love it. What a stupid system we have, man. Litigation is so dumb. Oh, but that's so perfect. I love it. Yep. Yeah. Um, I will also say this too, uh, on the flip side. So like dread, I like what you're doing because it's, it's the right form of activism on the right side of history. West Bowero Baptist church is on the wrong side of history, but is likewise doing the same 
useful sort of documentation that I appreciate. Mm -hmm. Because when we have, for example, like a gay pride rally in, or like a, our Black Lives Matter rally or whatever, I don't know why West Baptist Baptist would be anti BLM, but they probably are. Let's 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 not give them that. But if we were if we have a march, they're always on the sides with their with their signs and picketing and being like, God hates gay people, God hates, you know, unions that are outside of the Bible and all that stuff. And they have citations on their posters. So it's not like it's like a dubious or nebulous or ambiguous statement that they're making. They're like, no, the Bible says this. And meanwhile, when we're walking down the parades, there's Christians with us who are like, no, God loves everybody. Yeah. Like, you know, God loves gay people too. Yeah. I, I respect gender labels and stuff. It's like, yeah, but these guys are citing the Bible. I think you guys are, are stepping away from it and are, are thankfully with us on this, but you're not, you are so desperately far apart from what your doctrine is telling you that it's a good to have the reminder of where it's coming from. Cause it can't just be the impression that you have of your book. It has to be, is this book relevant or not? And these guys are citing the book. These guys are right there with the signs in black and white. And you're here with us saying that that isn't representing what you believe. So maybe you should be further apart from your, your strict dogma than you think. Um, you can't have it both Ty, ways. Eric, Ty, you just articulated something that I've been thinking for years and I've never really been able to kind of put it into words. So that I want to, I want to point out that what you just said is, is a really, really important piece mm. that, that a lot of my like somewhat religious friends and family just don't get. I mean, yeah. It's like, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You know, you either, you either believe just little pieces of the, you know, all the good bits or, I mean, you, yeah. So well said, well said. Thank you. Friend. I do want to know where the phrase, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Cause I think that's the whole point of cake. Right. Cause I said that I said that and I'm like, <laughs> why does that even make sense? <clears throat> English doesn't make sense. There was, there's a, there's a bunch of Chinese guys in our lab and I will say stuff like that. It's like frog in your throat. What does that mean? It's like, yeah, I don't know what that means. It's just a thing that I say. <laughs> it's a thing that a lot of Americans say, but we don't know why we say it. It's like, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. It's like, yeah, it's like frogs can't live in your throat. It's like, I know, I know, like, I know. Let's move on. <laughs> anyway, I got a birthday card once that had two really attractive ladies on it. Yeah. And they opened it up and it said, you can't have your Kate and Edith too. Oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> that, that took a right turn right at the right moment. I'm glad the name finished because I did not know where I was going. We're still FCC. Nice. Larry, how you been uh, since last week? Just want to check in on you. <clears throat> I'm doing fine. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Got a frog in my throat. Uh, you can't do Sorry. that. Those That's illegal. They, they, <laughs> they can't live in there. Yeah. No, uh, I, I've been playing computer games and just hanging out at the house, not getting out very much. I have my second COVID shot coming up next week, so I'm looking forward to that. Cool. Uh, I've been playing this new computer game, EVE Online. It's oh, no. Massive, we'll massive never see game. you again. No, we'll never died, see Larry again. I died my first time this morning, and I don't mean my ship blew up. I mean, they blew up my ship and then blew up my pod. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Which is uh, inside the ship, and right. I died. So that wasn't very good but it didn't cost me that can actually save me some time i was traveling at the time and it, i just showed up at my destination which is sure. cool so what what game was that eve eve, eve. eve. online okay. uh, look it up it's 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 old it's like 17 years old still going it's a massive multiplayer game uh, it's all takes place in, in space on your ship mm. it's all about ship battles and stuff it is but it's it's really cool Oh, it is. I would consider it like um, Dungeons and Dragons, but in space. But right. also, if you really, really like mm -hmm. spreadsheets, because <laughs> every single time yeah. someone says, "There's this really cool thing going on Eve Online," and they're explaining this brilliant story of like plot and intrigue and spies and and people backstabbing each other, I want to see a video of the gameplay, and it's just people with spreadsheets going like, "You see how cell five CX?" <laughs> well, is if you're on the bridge of your ship. If you're on the bridge of your ship, you're not actually turning a steering wheel or firing right. a button. You're yeah, hitting yeah, yeah. items on the screen, you know, right, uh, right. different things. And that's what you're doing in the game. And flying but, is uh, like charting a course. You're not like piloting anything. You're just, it's very, uh, it's realistic yeah. to the point where it's like, this yeah. feels like a government job. You should get, yeah. you should get paid to do this. Yeah, but watch some videos. It, it's yeah. pretty cool. It really is. Anyway, I have a lot of fun. Cool. Boudreaux, I wanted to check out on you as well. How have you been since last week? 
Good, good. Um, back from vacation now, trying to get in reality. Um, my son is back in school. He's in fourth grade. He's in person. That was crazy last week. Um, and my daughter goes back. She's in seventh grade, and she goes back next week. So she's got one more week of in person, which means I'm probably going to go back on campus and work a little bit. Um, I want to have kids at the house, so sure. Uh, and you know, if I'm f- fully vaccinated. Um, uh, but you know, still mask up and do, do what I can, but, yeah, uh, we might want to talk about masks just real quick. I think if I'm, is it, is it accurate that Kentucky has resolved their, uh, mask ordinances? Are, are they one of the States that have relinquished the, the mandate to be masked? Cause I know a lot of GOP led States have the opinion that masks aren't needed anymore. Texas, Mississippi, Alabama, thankfully s- still kept it. That that was unexpected, but um, a number we, of we have states. a Democratic governor, ah. and he's been, yeah, he's been Andy Bashir. I, I I suspect you guys are going to hear about him at the national level in a few years. He really really took this to heart, and the things that he's done in Kentucky have been he's he's getting all kinds of junk for it, um, you know. But uh, I think he did a really good job, and I, I hope I know. I think we're still we're still masking and. Um, and all that. So, but yeah. I'll be interested to see how things change. Yeah. I have some cousins in ten, uh, Texas and they're saying people weren't wearing masks already, but the few that really were are in more encouraged to not wear them at all. Like the people who were around the fence about it. And there's only 8% of people in Texas that have been vaccinated all altogether. Mm. Only 8%. And so it is, it is a an insanely frustrating even sickening to his stomach and to mine as well to have leadership get vaccinated, <laughs> right? And then tell other people, you don't have to wear a mask. And it's like, are you literally trying to kill us? <laughs> and the answer is yes. And so I put in I put into uh I put into the um the good old Google. Um and this is this is a bit biased I'm, and I'm sure it's bad, but like it's it's so plainly bad, and it goes back to what I was saying about dread. But I was like, I googled Republicans are trying to kill us, right? Just for fun, I put that in and hit enter. I just wanted to see what came out, and there were like forty thousand articles that had the exact same label, but they're all backdated to like nineteen ninety six, twenty seventeen. I'm like, this isn't new. <laughs> People knew this for a while, and it's just like one case after the other, and it started to depress me. I was just like, okay, let's just close this for now. I think the main thing is. Um, I think the main takeaway is, even though governors are removing it, they're doing it to maintain popularity with the people who weren't doing it already, right? It's not like people are on the phone waiting to hear what the governor said so that they can start being more unsafe. Like, those people aren't who are watching the news for direction. They're doing what they want and looking for justification after the fact. And so, in this country, at least in America, we have never had a very good track record for uh, the security and welfare of the individual. Like we, it, we don't do that very well. And as a result, things like this happen where outbreaks happen and the leadership have no capacity to be able to control or maintain what the, what the public does, especially on an individual basis. And so it's up to you as an individual until we figure that out, until we make this, this union more perfect is to take care of yourself. And the easiest thing you can do is wear a mask and to help to reduce the spread of an infection that is real and is rampant and still exists. And as, as unfortunate as it might sound, is gonna be around for a, a, a lot longer still too. And so it's an easy thing to wear a shirt. It's not a form of impression, oppression to be clothed outside. Same mask procedure helps you from um, uh, not only not having to like shave because I know a lot of people <laughs> don't like thinking about shaving all the time, but also protects you from uh, viruses. Also, take care of your mask too. Like, make sure you 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 wash it. You don't throw it out on the ground. There's it's a PPE. It's it's contaminated, and you need to treat it as such. So, just take care of it. Um, my my quick little update for for last week is I got my second vaccination shot. I had very little symptoms, either that or I slept through it. And I feel healthy and I feel great. And so if you're still on the fence of terms of getting a vaccination, you have the opportunity to get vaccinated, consider yourself incredibly fortunate. 
because if I wasn't running a lab where, you know, like we had to get vaccinated because we're working with filtration, I probably wouldn't have had this opportunity. And I would say uh, there are people at my job who passed on it just because they were worried that they didn't want to be the first ones in line. And I'm like, you're not the first one in line. You're not even number, you're not even number 100,000. You're like so behind and you have the opportunity to get this, get it. I feel great. I'm really looking forward to swimming again in a public pool with people like brushing elbows against them. I went skating at a park yesterday with friends. And the first thing I did when we met each other, they were vaccinated too, was we shook hands. We're like, hey, it's nice to see you bizarre it felt so weird i was just like oh my god human contact when i meet someone this is bizarre it felt good it felt good all right speaking of things that feel good deism and larry's soon to be rants i want to get i want to get through all of them larry uh, what do you got not on the so mind? much a rant uh just talking about it and uh shout out to uh, dale our old co-host uh we're talking about deism and i'm sure if i get something wrong he'll let me know <laughs> um he's been a deist he's been the only deist i've known for a long time but it, what this really comes back to is the arguments uh that uh, Christian apologists put, and most apologists of all religions put forward the argument from the first cause, the argument from design, complexity, morality, whatever. All of these arguments just point to a God, but they all think that it points to their God, but it doesn't get you there. All it does is get you to a God, even if they are true, and you know they don't have, they don't have any evidence to show that uh, the argument from the first cause actually means that it was a God who did it. It could have been anything; it could be pixies or fairies, for that yeah, matter. Pointing doesn't show proof, right? Right. right. And, but just for the argument uh, argument's sake, we could say that okay, it does. It points to a God. But how do you get from that God to your God, not some other God that's been? Um, worshipped by humans for the last 10,000 years, or even some God we've never heard of, or a God that died in the Big Bang or just lost interest and went away and has no interest in us whatsoever. Um, the, the nice thing and good thing about deism to me is there's no dogma. There's no preachers telling you uh, what God wants you to do. There's no holy book. Uh, there's there's no omniscient judge watching your every thought and ready to cast you into some hell for a, a, a wrong thought. There's no thought police. I think it's a, I think it's a good way to go if you have to have a God belief. That's a good that'd be a good one. Um, also, you can make up your own heaven, <laughs> and you can dis disregard the concept of hell if you want to. It's all up to you because it, nobody has answers. If there were, were real answers out there, would, there wouldn't be 10,000 different religions all over the world, all saying and all um, absolutely sure that their answers are correct and they're contradictory to the others. So that's my, my thoughts on the matter. Uh, what I'll, are yours? <laughs> I'll condense my point real quick and then we can okay. throw it out to uh, Boudreaux and, and then Dredd. But uh, I consider like the main religions to be delusional and i find deism to be just delusion light like if it was a brand item in a store it's like all the great taste of delusion with a half the calories right and yep. it seems to me like you don't need delusion you, yeah it's great that you don't have any you know central dogma but you're still falling into a really bad reasoning loop that's making you believe things that you have no evidence to support or, 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 or trust or test or, or in any way give you a credible or a tangible excuse to, to convince yourself that something is actually the case, which is a dangerous, which is a very dangerous mindset because you can easily transition that into believing anything with no evidence that you can't test and, and verify. It's the bedrock for other beliefs it's the, that you it's, can build on. Yeah, it's the hook that pulls you into a bunch of much more insane or inane, I would say, to be even, I don't even know if that's nicer, <laughs> inane, inane fallacies. But Eric, I'd like to get your opinion on this. Deism, what's it all about? <laughs> what do you think of it? <clears throat> So yeah, I like your I like your point that this is kind of like you know religion light, uh, and it kind of gets back to what you're saying earlier. It's it's if you if you strip away all kind of the, the dogma and the and the, the bad bits of religion that were 
you know, that really have good, you know, good reasons to have have come this far. I mean, there were, you know, there were reasons to not have gay children when, you know, you had a farm and you needed your kids to make babies and, uh, you know, so it, 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 it a lot, a lot of that makes sense how it came about. And, and now, now we've grown and learned a lot more so we can kind of move that away. So if someone's, I guess I'm less uh, thinking like you guys are that, that it's a ga- gateway to, to more bad thinking. It kind of, kind of feels like, um, I forget who said it, but it, 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 it kind of gives you that gold plated reason to stop thinking. Maybe it was, it was hitch, but um it could have been Sam Harris. I don't know. Was Sam Harris. Oh, <laughs> Sam Harris. Bingo. Bingo. Bingo all the way. Oh, all right. Continue. 30 minutes. I made it, made it 30. Nice, um, nice, nice. So, so yeah, it, 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 it makes me feel a little better. It, it almost feels more like progress, I guess. If you have someone who just, just believes in the, the, the origin of the universe is, 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 uh, uh, godly in, in nature, but then there's, yeah, there's no, nothing else to it, but yeah, you're right. It's, it's just, it's just pointing and not really proof. So I don't know, I guess I'm less, uh, worried about it and more thinking it's, it's a better direction. Maybe in a hundred years, we'll even shed that, but I don't know. What do you, what do you guys think? I don't, I don't know. I haven't thought a lot about this. I thought it was really interesting that, that in your mindset and, and, and a little bit of mine too, like the idea why, uh, Christians rationalize why you shouldn't be gay is because you need more farm hands. You need more people to like tend your cows. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I need someone to watch this pig, but he better not like other men because there's a lot of pigs here. I, that, that makes sense. I don't, I don't get the connection. <laughs> <laughs> Can't have gay farmers. What's the problem? <laughs> I, I, I will come back to that. Dread, I want to get uh, your point of view. Uh, what do you think on deism? Well, you know, it's, it's kind of like the difference of uh, telling people about your delusion and having a delusion and not telling people about it. Hmm. Hmm. Right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. From, yeah. From a certain perspective. Like the core uh, is still the same. Yeah, the core is the same. Exactly. Right. Hmm. Um, and I always go back to Matt Dillahunty uh, when he says, you know, um, that faith is belief without evidence. Uh, belief informs our actions and actions have consequences. Right. So there is a real um, issue in holding a delusion as uh, true, uh, regardless of whether you put a name to it or not. I got, I want to add to that. I think it's like, I'm, I'm building on Dred's analogy, but like it's either a cockroach or a chocolate covered cockroach, right? <laughs> That's good. You know, like it, it, there, I know one seems more appetizing because it has, you know, this really nice cover on it, but that core still, is still, it's the still the same. A cockroach. It's still yeah. a cockroach, man. You don't want anything to do with that. Why are you doing it? And I want to, Larry, I'm going to, I'm going to suggest something. Just let me know if this seems reasonable, but a lot of people appeal to deism for the sake of trying to find um, connection with something spiritual or, or make sense of all these things that do point to a God. And like I said, it doesn't have to point to any specific God. And if that's the case, why pick this God that you can't test, see, you know, um, reason. Well, it's just a simple, like it's a simple answer to why are we here? Why is the universe here? Makes why are we designed? Makes that's all. I mean, it could be a computer programmer in some other universe that has created the simulation. Yeah. yeah. I mean, deism can point to anything, uh, that, that you give the ability to create a universe. Um, you know, it could, like I said, it could be a fairy, you know, if you decide yeah. that fairies can create universes. And so I always, why, oh, I, what I hear from Dias a lot is, yeah, I believe in a God and he can be anybody. It's like, oh, it could be he, like in their head, their initial <laughs> impression was he, because they're yeah. typically a dudes as well. And it's like, no, I mean, it could be a force or anything like that. Okay. So it's a force we can measure. Like forces are things we can measure. It's like, well, it's an unmeasurable thing. That's like, okay. So it has matter. It's a, it's a thing. It's like, no, it's a, like the, it literally wiggles and squeezes its way through every form of like questioning it's frustrating because they believe it and they may have some sort of sensation of like if you can't prove that this is not real then i win and that's their fun argument but it's it's a waste of their time to to put effort into something that i can't test what should be better what should be better instead of chasing the deist shadow should be 
do you have a good reason to believe this? This is true. And can we talk about that reasoning that you use to, to come to this, this point of conviction that you have? And if that path isn't reasonable, I won't be convinced, but I at least want to highlight what my problems are with that methodology that you're using. Because if you're interested in this and you want this belief to be true as well, shouldn't you care about why you believe these things as well? And like, let's talk about the path. So like, we can put theism on a shelf, we can put you on a shelf. Let's just talk about that reasoning that you're using to get to that true conclusion. That seems to be a much more productive route um, for people who wanna have the conversation. That's, that's always an issue yes. of consent. Um, I, do, I do have this thing though. Um, it, it seems to be the case that we are psychologically programmed to seek forms of authority or leadership when we don't know something. And I think that's a human condition. Has Sam Harris ever talked about any of that, Boudreaux? Uh, not that I know of, but- No, because that's see. an exciting topic and he's a boring, boring man. Oh, no, no, no. And we all know this, we all know this. <laughs> but I, I, think it's, I think it's a biological programming, programming for us to be like, hey, I don't know this. I'm just gonna trust whatever this loud, convincing calm dude is saying or or person is saying and that's a problem only in the sense of if that person is deluding themselves as well that delusion trickles down and delusion tends to trickle down and i feel like deism was an idea that someone came up with who <laughs> didn't really think it out but seemed really captivating to a lot of people who are also scared well of let's not forget that many of the forefathers american forefathers uh, founding fathers uh were deists and that's the least of their problems let's <laughs> let's be real about this like that was the least of the reasons why these guys were all jerks let's let's yeah. be i'll call them out, i'll yeah. call them out all day yeah, long tom Paine was definitely a, a deist okay <laughs> We need to take a mid-show break at this sure, point. Sure, sure. Uh, sure, sure, sure. This is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Welcome to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Doubter Five, and we're on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is March 7th, 2020. Let's talk about the atheist slash free thought groups that you can join here in Knoxville. First, there's the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. Founded in 2002, we're going in our 19th year now. We have over a thousand members and we have weekly Zoom meetings that allow the atheists to get together and chat as a community. You can find us online or on Facebook or go to knoxvilleatheist.org to find their website. You can also just do a search on Google for Knoxville Atheist and it'll show up there. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one. Another large free thinking group here in Knoxville are the Rationalists of East Tennessee, R-E-T. Just go to Facebook and look for uh, Rationalists of East Tennessee or go to rationalist.org and click on upcoming events. Earlier in the show, we said we'd talk about the Knoxville Atheist video show. Well, it used to be a TV show here on local uh, programming, uh, community TV, but now it's moved online to YouTube. So just go to YouTube and look for Knoxville Free Thinkers, Knoxville Free Thought, uh, that type, type of thing, and you'll find our archives and our current shows. With us today on the show, we have Wombat as usual, Boudreaux and Dread Pirate Higgs. Welcome all. Uh, Wombat, where you want to pick up? I had a really serious problem, guys. No I bought way. a boat. I bought a boat. Oh, you know what a boat is. <laughs> a what? What are you talking about? You know I know what a boat, what a boat is? is. I know yeah. what a boat is. Yeah, yeah, it's a hole in the water where you put your money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the engine broke and it was sudden. Mm -hmm. So I was like, what do I do? This whole engine thing broke and I went down, I put on my scuba gear and I looked out at the bottom of the boat. I had this tiny little thing that spun around. And I'm like, ah, that's the thing that went wrong. And so I called Home Depot and here's the problem with Home Depot. I don't know the names for tools. So I go to the guy, I don't know the names for any of the tools. And I'm like, Javier, this is Javier, how can I help you? I'm like, Javier, I need some help. I need some tools to fix my boat. And he's like, okay, so what do you need? It's like, I need the, the thing 
that's like, you know, like it's a nail and it's got the little rails on them. It's like, oh, you need a screw. It's like, I know what a screw is. Okay, fine, I need a screw. And it's like, oh, is it a with a the pointy screw or the flat screw? It's like, do you mean a bolt? Do you need a bolt, sir? It's like, fine, fine, it's a bolt. Okay, I need a bolt. It's like, wait, are, do you need the bolt or do you need the thing that goes on the bolt? It's like, I need both. So you need a bolt and a nut. It's like, why are there names for everything? I just need to put them in the hole. What's the hole called? He's like, the holes are just holes, sir. I'm like, Javier, stop playing with me. And it's like, what do I need to fix this? you know, propeller part. I was like, you need a fan. Oh, a fan. What a fan. What a fan. What a mighty good fan. Guys, <laughs> what a mighty, what a mighty, good, mighty fan. good fan. We are going to go over some listener comments. That was around the barn. I love it. I love it. I get to do my Home Depot stand up. It's been a while. Uh-huh. So, uh, we got some good um, videos going out. I recently posted uh, uh, a really nice video from the Daily Moth. They are a deaf news agency on YouTube. And they made a post that I think really highlights the different ways of how people sign. So they have like correspondence in different parts of the world and they all have a very distinct accent sign language wise, even though they're all using ASL. And I made a video highlighting the difference between that. I got a comment that the audio was low and I think that's, I think it won't matter as much because it's a whole lot of signing in it. <laughs> but I will turn up the audio in the future next time. Uh, you can't hear the people. <laughs> They're not talking. They're not talking. Either that or it's a really good joke. I'm going to have to catch up on that. But uh, yes, uh, Dada's Trader Room did make a comment says, hey, do you think there's a market for sign to voice tra- interpreters? Sign to voice interpreters? Absolutely. And there is a market for it. That's actually a profession. It's called interpreters. And and they're, they're all over the place. Strontium76 made a really, really great scientific uh, comment on the the nature of music and how it actually can motivate us. And this is based off the last video that we made, which is called Wonders of Science versus Wonders of Religion, where I think one of our points was like, hey, we're really thankful th- the impact to an extent that religion had on music because it, it really helped to support it, fund it, and, and, and that drove the science behind finding out what works in terms of moving people and what doesn't work. And so you can read Strong Team 76 comment right here. There's math equations in it. <laughs> I won't get into it in that detail. Math equations I haven't checked for veracity yet, though. Uh, let's see. Dada's Trading Room, though, good friend of the show, he says based on our show from last week, which was, again, Wonders of Science versus Wonders of Religion. He says, first, I want to mention that I really wanted to comment on the previous episode. You guys made so many se worthy statements that I was planning to re-listen and comment on each issue. You, Wombat, that's me, actually should have conducted a long SE intervention. Not on the show, though. <laughs> then, <laughs> then life happened, and all of a sudden, a new episode appeared. Anyway, I want to talk about Ramadan. Now, I don't know, but from what I've heard, they can't eat when Allah can see if you hide somewhere in the night they do eat because Allah can't see obviously Allah lacks the wonders of science hmm so I will say this I don't I think that's a it's a cute it's a cute interpretation of Ramadan but I feel like for Ramadan it's more of like we have set periods of time where we can eat during the day because we can't obviously starve ourselves for you know the entire length of Ramadan. And I, um, and when I when I talk to my Muslim family, uh, the whole point of it is to put yourself in a position where you can be in a similar mindset of those who are less fortunate than you. And the rich celebrate Ramadan, the, the athletics celebrate Ramadan, people in space celebrate Ramadan. It's sort of like just this whole community-wide understanding of like people don't always have food. And I feel like just from the American perspective of like, what's a holiday in America like? Christmas? It's like, we get free stuff. We get like, free, like we have expectations, entitlements. We eat all day long. We eat all day long. <laughs> Thanksgiving comes in, we just eat. Halloween, uh-huh. we can just knock on people's door and they don't, don't give us stuff. We can pull pranks on them. But I feel like Ramadan is like one of the best core holidays of like, hey, be good to people like, and understand where they're coming from. Like they, not everybody has a home. Not everybody can put food on their plate. There's some good stuff behind it. And I will... Say one last thing before I, I, I throw on to Boudreaux for comments on Ramadan. But uh, I, I feel like, and let me know what you think about this, Eric. I feel like I sort of give Muslims a free pass that I would not give otherwise to Christians, only because my Christian background is so much more stronger 
than my Islam background, such that when I hear things from a Christian perspective, I'm way more knee jerk ready to to dismiss it because I came from there. Like I, I know think most of, most American atheists uh, are that way. Right, uh, right. And but we also get a lot of criticism for not pounding on. Uh, Islam as much as we do Christianity. Mm. Uh, a lot of a lot of people say we give them a pass, mm. but it's just that we're we were raised in a Christian uh, environment generally, even if it wasn't you know Christianity per se. Right, the, the country is oriented in that direction. I mean, think of all the Christian Christmas specials we have every. Yeah, every, every, I'm so tired of year. all those. Yeah. I also feel like a lot of the rhetoric that comes from anti-Muslims come from Christians, and I'm just trying to so put myself away from all of that and just be like, listen, you guys do what you, you guys celebrate how you want to celebrate. Obviously, you know that I don't believe it, but I respect that you're not fighting for team, <laughs> the, the home team, because I hate not, I'm not a fan of the home team. Buja, what do you think? What do you think? Well, that actually, that's a really, really good, interesting topic. Maybe worthy of its own show, but um, and and here I will purposely go go the Sam Harris route. I think that's one of the things he did early on in his career when he wrote um, uh, the the end of faith, uh, which he wrote right after the the nine eleven. Um, and I think he was trying to take himself out of the you know the Christian kind of the, the American point of view and just and just try to criticize all religion hmm. um and, and he really tries to point out some of the real real dangers of islam and, and some of the things that yes we do give passes to uh you know as as american atheists or christians and i think i think it gets conflated with um uh, xenophobia or racism islamophobia you know uh, sam had that episode of bill Maher's show where ben affleck went crazy against him called him a bigot and a racist and all this but yeah. i mean he's really just criticizing islam just like he's criticizing religion right but you're right th there is almost something but yeah you saw of, that reaction i saw that reaction i remember the video you're talking about yeah so crazy. so no it's, it's a it's a good point and actually we should maybe step back and say well i mean should we should we criticize everything equally or is it worth giving you know islam a free pass just to look like better people i mean i think is that kind of part of it is I, I think, want to see I think where I'm coming from is I have a standard of critique that obviously if I apply it to Christianity also applies to Islam but I'm just exhausted from constantly using it on Christianity that even if it's a different flavor of 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 nonsense it's at least strawberry flavored nonsense you're like oh my gosh thank goodness okay <laughs> this is something different yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I'll, I'll, I'll handle this later. <laughs> but at least put it on the shelf for now. Uh, Dread, what do you think? I'd like to get your opinion on this. Um, specifically, specifically. Do you, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yes, I can okay. hear you. Um, well, I guess what I can say, maybe summed up in a paragraph. Of the argument I wrote for um, the judgment. Hmm. Um, a person does not have to look f uh, far past one's own nose to appreciate that all religions are mutually incompatible to varying degrees, and that members of each regularly mock, satirize, and criticize the beliefs of others. Hmm. Consider, hmm. consider the three Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. While all three have a common origin and worship the same God, a non-Jew is a Gentile, a non-Christian is a heathen, and a non-Muslim is an infidel. Yep. When one considers the millions of Gentiles, heathens, and infidels who met with a gruesome end for not believing in the right religion, it may be considered high time that a religion that values humor, self-deprecation, and silliness is the vessel sailing to commerce seas. And should it be posited that Pastafarians are simply atheists rocking the boat of religiosity, we would counter that the diversity of belief is far greater than anyone might realistically account for. Hmm. Ultim ultimately, we are atheistic to all gods other than the one we believe in. Ramen. 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 I'd also throw this out too. Being an atheist doesn't mean you can't have a religion either. So like, That's, even absolutely. if someone says, well, you're just an atheist, like, yeah, but there are atheist religions. So yeah, most Buddhism. of the Eastern religions are yeah, Buddhism, for instance. Yeah. 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 And so, and while deism is a form of theism, it's like 
such a weak form of theism <laughs> that it can you could basically hang out with the atheists and have a good time <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> as long as you support science <laughs> we have members in a ask who are deists mm, right 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 so <clears throat> the spectrum is so broad to to come down with like a, a strict criterion like that i want to i want to go right back to that muslim analogy real, real quick um so if you have delusion which is like the brand vanilla delusion and you have delusion light which is like the the deism I feel like um, there's like new crystal delusion, <laughs> which has its like own Cosby commercials and stuff like that. And you're like zero it's calorie. A, yeah, it's a new formula. <laughs> Come on, we're trying it out new. And I'm like, it's still delusion, but I, at least they're trying something different. <laughs> no. I'm happy to see that. Yeah, I'm happy to see that it's something different. I'm not gonna try it. I, I know what's in that bottle, but I'm glad that there's different brands of it. But I don't want to have more vanilla delusion. I think we should try to work our way towards getting people off of that and and let them know that there's better things out there for them to try. Um, or at least question why they're so advent or adherent on that particular brand. Um, I'm going to open this up a little bit. Eric, we were talking about deism today. Is there any... Is there any sort of like, how about, how do I put this? Is there a form of religious expression that irks you in a, in a, in a minor way uh, that, that maybe just comes from a lack of understanding on your part or from a, I've dealt with these people before and it's just, it's never very a productive conversation. I don't really understand what they believe. I'm not sure if they understand it either. They're just, they're just using the label to, to, to stay away from atheism. Have you seen stuff like that before? Yeah, yeah. I, actually, at, at Summit, which we've talked about before, happens right behind me when we're allowed to be in person. <clears throat> we get a lot of people to come in, and I've mentioned this before, but I think it's a really good point to, to reiterate. Um, they they hang on this agnostic term. Yeah. They're like, no, no, no. I'm not. I'm. They, they're they're afraid of you know the fundamental you know, religious person that that's crazy to them. Yeah. And they don't really like getting up early on Sunday. So they haven't subscribed to a religion, but they're so scared of atheism as a term that they want right. something in the middle and they invent the space mm. between theism and atheism. That's like right. kind of in the middle and it's, right. it's a binary term. So there's no space there. Mm. So then they, then they, they pretend that the word agnostic means right in between and then you get into the issue of, of knowledge versus, you know, belief. And, and it's a whole nother conversation, but, but yeah, it's exactly what you're saying. You get people that just don't want, they're scared of the term atheism for good reason, because I mean, atheists are, are, well, do you, well I put in the, the chat, there are several States that I, it's at least my understanding that don't allow uh, atheists uh, in public office. And I don't know if that's true in Tennessee, but it was on the list. I mean, when you're in court, you swear on the Bible to be president yeah. you swear on religious holy books that you may not even represent that yeah. Larry, what do you got? Well, I was going to address that about uh, atheism not being allowed in, in public office, office in Tennessee. It's in the Constitution, that atheist, the state Constitution, that atheists cannot serve in uh, public office. However, that's a founding document. It's not going to change. Uh, we have amendments to that document that allow people to, you know, of any faith and no faith, to serve in any public office in Tennessee. Uh, but it's like uh, the original U.S. Constitution. It still allows, you know, the original documents as we, you know, have slaves and there were three fifths of a person and all that stuff. It's in there, but we later changed that so that it's not effective. And it's the same with Tennessee Constitution. Wow, I mean, that makes sense. And that that's that's what we miss out when we read a Facebook headline and it's a meme and it's, mm, <laughs> it's right. meant to get your attention and not be true. Right. I think I, yeah. I think most people are just afraid that uh, atheists are going to eat babies in public. And I wanted to know like a bit of a turn off. Dread. I wanted to know, and that was a funny thing that we've done the baby joke <laughs> many many times on the show. So I've uh, never heard it on the show. Or just I like, had to bring it in. Uh, it's the baby thing again. Sam right, Harris say go. something about that. Yeah, or yeah, yeah I hate that. Right. I hate that I have to eat them in private. Yeah. Uh, Dread. <laughs> yeah. In Canada, is there as much of a connotation 
on agnosticism as sort of like the pseudo atheism. I'm not comfortable with the atheism term or like I'm kind of spiritual. I don't really know where I'm at, I, but I don't like those atheist people. I don't know what they're really. Yeah. Um, and I think for the most part, the people who say they're agnostic don't really know what that means. Yeah. Um, and they don't know what atheism is to uh, to uh, distinguish uh, from it. So um, and that's just my personal experience, not that hmm. um I'm speaking for Canada in general, but uh, yeah, I would say. I mean, you know, in in Canada, there is a de facto state religion, of course, mm -hmm. and that's the Church of England because the Queen is our uh, sovereign, right? Right. So, you know, undying you Queen. Yeah, the undying queen. The undying queen. Uh, <laughs> she's never going away. <laughs> I want to say, like, uh, it it the confusion that comes about when people who are atheists or people who are questioning say that they're agnostic um i feel like religious people gather onto that almost intentionally because when i have a conversation with christians who are cool to have these kinds of conversations with and i and i explain to them oh i'm an atheist i don't believe in a god it's like well aren't you really agnostic i was like why one why do you know that word and two why do you not know why that word means <laughs> And then when I say I am both agnostic and atheist, like, I don't understand what that means. I'm like, then where did you hear that word from? And must, they must have heard it from their leadership who just said, those guys are agnostic. No definition. Mm -hmm. They just know the term is them. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. And I, I feel that's really unfortunate. Too, yeah. So. I like to ask him if somebody tells me they're an agnostic, but they're not an atheist. I said, well, what does agnostic mean? Yeah. Say, it means I don't know. I said, All right. Okay, you told me what you know or don't know. Tell me what you believe. Mm. Right. And that kind of throws them. Right. So it, it comes right down on that. But, it uh, is. Uh, you know, they'll come back with, I don't know if I right. believe or not. <laughs> so and I found. It's right back up in the air. And I found the question of knowledge is a much better conversation to have than on theism belief or atheism like just let's focus on this on knowledge like what do we know and how do we know it mm -hmm. right? right and a lot of the times at the end of those conversations you can get a diehard theist to at least admit that they're an agnostic theist which in my head is like why why believe it if you if you don't know if it's true that seems yep. like the most reasonable thing and oftentimes yeah. it has nothing to do with the belief it's just social pressure it's like if i stop or believing their personal this, preference i know deists who want who believe in god just because they want to but what um, does your personal preference have on impact of whether or not it's true or not right right no, right so like uh, and why does the effect of well my wife will not like me as much if I, you know, don't believe this or my job opportunities might go down if I don't believe in this or um, I won't have as many friends or it might be harder yeah. to make more friends in the future. About pragmatism there. All of those things might be true, but it doesn't have any impact on whether or not it's actually a, a real right. thing or not. And that's, I feel, is the admission that they're believing it because they have to believe it not because they actually are convinced that it's true. And and there's this distinction of like next level of like, I can't believe something, even if I really want to, if I'm not convinced that it's true. <laughs> and so I'm just saying that I am religious right. just to keep my life easy, even though I both know and I'm unwilling to admit that this in fact is not actually accurate, that there was in fact not a guy who walked on water. Yeah, that's, and stuff. that's a lot of Pascal's wager too. It's, it's not so much that they want you to change your belief is just say that you believe when you don't. Right. But they, a lot of those guys just need a, how do I put this? They need a path that's not as scary. They need people on the other side who are open about it to say like, ah, but you are on this side and we're friends. Maybe it's worthwhile to just have friends that actually care about who you are as a person, not who you pretend to be or pretend to be in public. And that might be less stressful. Maybe it'd be better to have spouses or significant others that respect me for who I am rather than who I, you know, you know, lie that I am once a week <laughs> and maybe I can save 10% of my paycheck. All these are great things. Eric, that was a great point. I, like I have a lot of umbrage against um, yeah. the way how agnostic is misused. I, I will throw out one other last thing. I think we have like maybe five more minutes before the end of the show or before we start closing. I hate how scientific terms get misused by the general public at all cases. And I feel like, uh, I feel like when things get political, um, the, the quality of scientific terms that already have an established meaning 
are diluted. I feel like the same things happen to theory. Like theory used to mean something. <laughs> Now everyone's got theories and you're just like, oh, but these don't count. And so uh, I think for at least 2020, 2021, I'm going to throw a, a rest in peace little sign for personal research. <laughs> the, the term yeah. personal research, right? Because that used to mean something, at least when I was in grad school. And, and, and Eric, you might be able to support me on this too. You're a scholastic, you're a scholastic nerd as well. I'm saying like, when I said, hey, I did some research and I found out that I was wrong about X, Y, Z, that would have been good enough for people to be like, oh, good. And then you probably had a good reason for being wrong. But now it's like, well, I thought the government wasn't eating babies, but I did some personal research. <laughs> guess what I found out? There's this guy on the internet named X, Y, Z. He's, he's the son of Q. <laughs> yeah. Pizza gate. And I'm like, you're right. We need to storm the Capitol again. I'm like, hold on, guys. Personal research doesn't mean what you think it means anymore. <laughs> All right. That, that's my three cents. Uh, Dread, where can we find your stuff? Where are you going to be at in the future? I am uh, still on uh, my YouTube channel, uh, Mind Pirate, M-I-N-D-P-Y-R-A-T-E. Um, I'm still trying to figure out how to get it set up so because I'm, I shifted computers. Um, sure, so sure, sure. I want to try and get this set up so it can uh, live stream on Sundays. I saw you broadcasting. Um, I saw you broadcasting this morning when I was making Yeah, this. and I just couldn't get my microphone, which has always been the hanging point uh, for me on this silly thing. But uh, I'll, I'll tell you what I've done. I can't. Sometimes I have trouble getting my second camera to work, this one that I'm pointing at too. So I yeah. just have two cameras. <laughs> one of them will work. Maybe you just... <laughs> an extra mic you got one yeah. in your headset possibly maybe you can uh yeah yeah maybe that's what i should do yeah just like one of these is gonna work yeah all right uh and we're also gonna see on the toronto star it seems like that's that's the thing yeah i i actually if if we've got a second i just want to yeah, read the last paragraph of let's the judges the judges thing here says the tribunal the, the human rights tribunal determined that accepting the petitioner's complaint my complaint for filing quote, would not further the purposes of the code, unquote, one of which is to promote a climate of understanding and mutual respect where all people are equal in dignity and respect, unless you're a pastafarian, clearly. Right. Uh, the judge goes on to say, in my view, the tribunal's decision was neither, n neither clearly irrational nor so flawed that no amount of curial deference can justify letting it stand. Accordingly, it cannot be said to have been patently unreasonable. So we'll see him in church. I argue that. Yeah, we'll see him in church on next Sunday. You'll be, <laughs> you'll be able to meet him there. <laughs> the illusions, guys, it doesn't it doesn't go away when you get letters at the end of your name or we'll put on a, a black coat. Right. They're, they're mm -hmm. permeated exactly. through society. Uh, Eric, you got new music down the pipe? What's going on with you? I got nothing digitally going on here really uh but my buddy chad mm -hmm. whose show um is actually has his house on uh that he was working on for sale so i'm hoping he gets that thing sold okay and I okay get back to cracking on our show so i've got a huge list of ideas for some topics so we might be able to hit the ground running with some shows keep them kind of short or something and and then just put out a bunch. So, yeah, I'm actually, full. that's not a bad idea. What if you just made the shows like ten minutes each, and you just did yeah. several in one session, and just be like, "What yeah. do you think about this?" Boom. Yeah. Buds yeah. talking about bud, budding buds, or whatever you yeah. want to call it about it. Yeah. Hot no, topics. I, I like hot topics. topics. I'll get you guys. Uh, I'll get you guys early, early views of it. So yeah. very, very Hopefully. cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm down. Just let me know. Uh, and you can find my stuff on Let's Chat. I am going to do some more sign language breakdowns from the Daily Moth, this deaf news broadcast show. Uh, it's towards my interests of trying to help people better communicate with each other. You can find that on my channel, Let's Chat. And if you're watching this YouTube channel, you're probably there already. And I will turn up my volume, but I guarantee you they are not talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, it won't matter much. And I'm signing too. So like, you know, maybe you, you might want to get to the point where you just steadily turn it down. Maybe that's what I'm doing. Like maybe I'm just getting it quieter and quieter so that you have to learn how to sign to appreciate the show. Anyway, daughter five, I have this big burning question in my heart. I have all this <laughs> atheism around me and I don't know what any of it's all about. And there's cockroaches and chocolate covered cockroaches too. I don't know, what, what should I think? Yeah, well, what's going I don't on know here? about the cockroaches, but I have a book out. It's called Atheism, What's It All About? It's available on Amazon. You can find it there. And it's, uh, it's 
it's not audio, but it is uh, Kindle, so you can buy an ebook if you like. Or you can go to digitalfreethought.com and read an awful lot of my uh, content there. Be sure to click on the blog button for our radio show archives, Atheist Songs, and med- many articles. Uh, if you have questions for the show, please send them to Ask an Atheist at KnoxvilleAtheists.org. We'll answer my future shows. If you are having trouble leaving religious beliefs behind, maybe emotion or uh, problems with that, you can also go to RecoveringFromReligion.org. They have people there to help you with that. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. My YouTube channel can be found under Larry S. Rhodes. This has been the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Good show. Yeah, yeah, good show. I like the idea that you could hold a, a post-death ceremony to make a soul gay, and then when you get sued for it, it's like, well, you have to admit that we actually did something, right? and you have to prove a soul exists at that point. Otherwise, <laughs> we're free to go, right? It's like, yeah, yeah. I guess so.